I, uh, hello, everybody. I want actually more people to come in because we have a lot of noodles prepared for this event. Uh, and uh, in the future, we might be able to wholesale the noodles to a lot of people. So maybe a lot of people really want to join. Even if you're not interested in the speech, you should still come and don't leave until you taste the noodles, OK? So my name is Yudai Kanayama. Today, I'll be talking about this restaurant that I produce called Hanon Brooklyn, opened on February this year. Uh, OK. So this is what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, I'll be talking about this store called Hanon Brooklyn. Also, I'll be talking about also the business side of udon uh, restaurants in New York City. Uh, as I'm not a chef and I'm not a, I, I would say I'm a professional eater. I'm, I'm the person who likes to talk about what I like and make people love it as well. So let me. Uh, so this is what I'm going to talk about today. And I think I'm going to analyze the business by mentioning uh, the challenges for the udon business in New York and also the solution to those uh, challenges that we have here. <clears throat> so a little bit about myself before going into the detail. Uh, so my name is Yudai, and I was born in Sapporo in 1990. Uh, the first restaurant that I opened is called the Izakaya in East Village that I uh, opened five years ago. Uh, and then uh, yeah, I graduated the University of Upstate New York. I'm from Hokkaido, uh, very countryside, so I really like, uh, enjoy the nature in Upstate. Uh, now I'm here in New York City, I'm trying to do as many things as possible. Okay, then I'm also a creative director for this restaurant in Canal Street Market called Izakaya Samurais, uh, where people can just come in for the quick lunch to go. Uh, we are serving uh, miso soup, uh, but in a different style. We uh, hand pour the dashi, uh, so it looks like, um, uh, like I'm uh, making a coffee, but actually I'm uh, dripping the dashi into my cup. Uh, that was actually featured on the Japan TV uh, last year because that was a new way of introducing dashi, uh, and I think it was a better way uh, of actually getting more dashi in your cup of miso soup. I served it in a cup because I wanted to make it look like a coffee that everybody is familiar with. Uh, and people uh, see the color of uh, akadashi is almost like a brown color, looks like a, really looks like a coffee, and it's healthier than coffee. So that, that I, uh, the, uh, I'm the creative director for that place in Canal Street Market. Uh, and uh, so my company is called Shiawase Factory LTD. Uh, Shiawase means happiness. So I wanted to make a company which makes a lot of people happy by doing a lot, a lot of different things. Uh, I'm here today uh, as a uh, producer of Hanon. So I'll be talking about Hanon uh, that opened uh, recently, six months ago. <clears throat> And one more thing, actually, uh, we're opening another sake bar next month in the new Essex market in the basement. Uh, that'll be an exciting project for everybody to check out. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, a lot of people ask me, what do I do? Uh, I don't know what to say, but um, like I said, my job, I think, is to talk about what I love and make people love it. I do a lot of things other than just uh, food, but I have another creative office slash gallery in Lower East Side where I let my uh, favorite people do the pop-up and support them uh, to be popular. I, I don't do, in other words, I don't do anything I don't like. I don't want to lie. I just serve what I really love. So the Hanon approached me uh, and then said, can you, can you help me make this business popular? I said, yes, I can if I like it. If I don't like it, I don't do it. I've been producing and consulting a lot of business, but most important thing for me, before I even take the job, is that if I like it. I don't do anything for money, I do it because I love what, I, what they do. That's very important, okay? <clears throat> so Hanon Brooklyn opened uh, by two, other, uh, two different companies, uh, Lock and Roll Japan and Sagami Lover. Uh, was uh, to offer the honest, simple, and healthy Japanese cuisine and udon noodle, of course. Uh, all of these three words, honest, simple, healthy, everything is important, but I think to me the most important thing here is the honest. I don't want to serve anything that I think that people like here, but I want to serve 
that something that I like first so that I have a confidence to make people like it. I don't want to make anything that's original. I don't want to make anything that's not real. So honest was uh, the most important thing for me uh, when I uh, started helping Hanon restaurant. So they're serving the healthy, of course, and delicious. That's also important, but healthy, simple, and honest. <clears throat> And this is a little bit of uh, information about uh, Hanon. It's in Williamsburg, New York, uh, in Brooklyn, sorry, on Union Avenue, like by the Lollimer L train station. <clears throat> and the hours is listed. OK, so uh, I'm going to talk about the challenges for the udon restaurants in New York first. OK, the image of the udon uh, is more warm, hot dish. Uh, so, in the summer, when it's hot, the sales tends to be lower, of course, because people think udon is in a hot soup. Same as ramen and soba, too. But, so that's the challenge. Uh, can I introduce something else that's not hot? And uh, so that's the, ch the first challenge that we had. <clears throat> and the second uh, challenge for the udon Udon is full of gluten uh, with the flour. It consists of a lot of flour. It's not maybe as healthy as the soba noodle. <clears throat> so how can I make that noodle healthier than the regular udon? <clears throat> and also, udon makes people full. And people may be just uh, eating udon only at the restaurant and leave the restaurant. Then the average spending per person is going to be low. It's not good for business. <clears throat> Okay, then the, so what we do to solve these uh, challenges. Okay, so we are actually introducing udon in a variety of ways. Maybe some ways that you guys ever, never have even seen. Uh, we have a lot of different types of udon that can be enjoyed all seasons, not only the summer. And we are creating the healthiest udon noodle. And we offer non-udon dishes, maybe to enjoy, to share with your friends before you're going to eat the udon. So we don't think Hanon, uh, we don't consider Hanon as just a udon restaurant, but I would say it's more of a udon bistro, where people can share many small plates before eating the udon and maybe enjoy with the drinks. And so uh, the most important thing, like as, as I've been saying many times, is the passion and love. People who work there are, have to be the biggest fan of the restaurant. So that the air and the atmosphere created by those people, that's unbeatable. That's the most important thing. That's the best PR I've been doing. I've never hired a PR. Me, myself, working the hardest in the restaurant is the best PR. OK, so for those who are not familiar with the udon, let me uh, just explain what it is. Udon uh, is thick wheat flour noodle. And there's uh, one important word in uh, udon. Uh, it's called koshi. Koshi is something like in the core of the noodle. It's like, almost like an al dente texture. It's like the core that you want to get. You don't want to make the noodle too soft. You want to have this good koshi. And now I'll talk about different types of udon. Most of these are available actually in Hanon. So the first one is the most basic form of udon. It's called kake udon. So it's, uh, you guys know this uh, already, but that's the basic one in a hot soup. <clears throat> and then the next one, which is actually our signature uh, udon types in Hanon. It's the cold type. So it's uh, dipping. we have dipping sauce on the side of cold noodle. And then here you see two different colors, no colored noodle. You've maybe never seen anything in green. Uh, I'll explain what it is, and you'll be able to try that later, too. So this one is called seiro, seiro udon. And we also have something that's similar to seiro. It's also cold, uh, but it's, the, the soup is not on the side, but it's actually, the noodle is in the cold soup. 
Uh, it was a special only available for the summer, so you have to come back next summer if you want to try this kind at Hanon. And some other styles. Uh, we have uh, yaki udon, which is almost like a sauteed noodle on a frying pan. So we boil the noodle, and then we cook on a frying pan uh, with different ingredients. So that's called yaki udon. And we also have maze udon. Maze udon can be uh, many different uh, styles. Uh, we have mentaiko, spicy cut raw, uh, or the uni udon. Uh, it's, it's more like a modern version of udon that we also offer at, at Hanon. We have mentaiko udon and the uni udon. And udon uh, is different. Uh, by the legion, so we have some famous styles, uh, different styles in a different legion. Maybe the most famous one, most well-known one uh, is the sanuki udon. Sanuki udon is maybe very thick and uh, stiff, so it has a lot of koshi, and at the same time, it takes a long time to cook it. So udon usually takes a long time to cook if you start boiling from, I mean, if you start cooking from the beginning to the end. You need people to eat something while making them wait for your udon to be done. <clears throat> and this is from Kagawa Prefecture, maybe the most classic style of udon. And this one is like uh, Inaniwa style from uh, Akita Prefecture. It's thinner and it's, uh, it's very thin, like almost like a, like a ramen or you know, soba noodle. And then this one is Hakata style. Uh, from Fukuoka Prefecture. Uh, this one is kind of very special, and you know, some people might not like it because it's too soft. Uh, it doesn't have as much koshi as the other ones. So udon is always served in dashi uh, in different ways, but dashi uh, is a stock made from various ingredients, but Hanon we use katsuo bushi, uh, fish and some uh, uh, mackerel and uh, kelp and edashi is like the heart of Japanese food that you need to make anything delicious. So we care a lot about dashi in Hanon. So we have uh, two different uh, style of the dashi by the legion. Kanto, which is uh, Tokyo and Kanagawa, so it's like a neighboring uh, prefectures of Tokyo. Usually udon looks like this. The soup looks darker than the, the Kansai style, which is more white or gold. So I'm from uh, this region, and then my, uh, the udon that I used to eat is always in this dark, like more like a soy sauce colored soup. And actually, maybe in Kanto area, soba might be more uh, popular, more eaten than the udon. Maybe because the, the dashi is too strong and soba noodle has better, more aromatic and more smell, so it, does, it can, it can uh, beat the, the strong taste of soup. And Kansai is the opposite. Uh, it's like Osaka Kyoto has this colored soup. It's more like white and golden color from the ingredients that's used in dashi. And uh, in this region, maybe udon is more enjoyed than soba. Uh, udon is the simpler form of noodle. It's only white and no like smell or no aroma to that. So even in that golden soup, that udon noodle can stand, stand out. <coughs> so yeah, like I said, udon is simpler and less flavored noodle than soba. Soba has more aroma and more smell. Uh, and so maybe uh, soba noodle would be considered the most important thing, but then the udon, I think dashi is, is more important than the noodle. I mean, both of them are very important, but dashi is very important for udon. And soba is healthier, as I said, uh, with the buckwheat. Uh, udon uh, is usually not as healthy as soba. So these are, this is a good example to show the difference in uh, dashi in a different region. Even the cup noodle, the same cup noodle in a different region, Kanto Kansai, has different uh, dashi uh, powder inside. So 
you see two different colors. This is the same, uh, by the same brand, same cup noodle, but different color. The one on the left uh, is more like a golden color, so it's from Kansai. And then the one on the right is darker, it's from Kanto. <clears throat> okay, so Hanon's Udon, what's special about Hanon's Udon? So we make noodles every morning before opening, flesh, for only for that day. Uh, so the udon that we have today was made this morning by this uh, head chef, Mr. Hasegawa, this morning just to uh, serve uh, noodles uh, to you guys. Uh, and then, you know, udon noodle is very, very sensitive. Water matters. And, you know, the temperature, also you have to know uh, the, the different portion uh, depending on the different temperature. I never... Uh, I, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, well, I'm not a chef, but I tried it first time uh, with the same uh, recipe, uh, but udon wasn't made. I couldn't make a udon at all. It, it's that very, very uh, sensitive. Uh, you have to like master that. You have to know that different temperature affects different. Like you know, you have to have different recipe depending on the temperature and also the water. Hanon also cares about the water quality, so we have this uh, alkanized. Uh, the, uh, the device that control the, uh, uh, the uh, water uh, contents. <laughs> yeah, so Hanon is making a new style of udon that doesn't belong to any style. So we are kind of introducing a new udon and then we are trying to make it a classic in Europe. The original location of Hanon is in Kamakura. So the one in New York, the one here is the second location. Kamakura is in Kanto, and as I say, maybe soba is more popular than udon in Kanto area. So they wanted to challenge by introducing the best udon that they could make and make uh, udon, make udon a thing in also in Kanto uh, as well. So Hanon's style, uh, at the beginning, I say we make something healthy, honest, simple, and delicious. Uh, to uh, change the uh, stereotype of the udon, we try to make the healthiest udon by adding something else into that powder. Uh, I'll explain what it is. Uh, and it's it's, uh, it's green colored uh, noodle that you are getting soon. So two types of noodle we have at, at Hanan. We have actually three different styles. If I include just the different thickness udon in a white, and yeah, so we have these two uh, thin one for the cold udon, and then we have one thick one for the hot udon. So the one, uh, the uh, whitish one, I say whitish because it's not perfectly white. To make the udon healthier than the regular white udon, we add the zen uh, whole wheat flour. So it's healthier uh, than the regular 100% uh, pure uh, flour. We add a little bit of brown color. So just take a look at the noodle when you get it. You're going to realize there is like a little bit of brown colors inside the noodle, which is the whole wheat. Then you can be used. <coughs> and sasa uchi is their signature noodle that they invented. Sasa means uh, bamboo leaf. And they uh, import this special sasa bamboo leaf from Hokkaido exclusively for this restaurant uh, in a co cooperation, uh, thanks to the uh, mutual, uh, we uh, could finally get this sasa powder from Hokkaido called Kumazasa, which is maybe uh, known to be one of the healthiest greens that we have in Japan. And so the sasa uchi has the uh, sasa bamboo leaf and also omugi wakaba, uh, it's a bamboo leaf, uh, so it's a berry leaf powder. So those two greens are in the sasa uchi noodle. Uh, I just looked at the, the like, uh, amount of greens that you should have. So we have this thing called aojiru uh, in Japan. Aojiru is like a water with the greens, like these greens inside the water. Uh, a lot of people drink that for the health uh, benefit. But it's not delicious. I, I don't like to drink that. It's, it's, not, it's kind of, it tastes too green and strong. So the amount of that you, you should drink a day uh, is like, uh, I think it's like a four grams powder or something like that. But then 
one portion of your sasa uchi udon that you get at the restaurant is actually more than that three gram that you should take. I cannot drink aojiru because it's not delicious, but I can eat. I actually love this sasa uchi noodle. So don't you think it's very uh, amazing that you can take that much green deliciously uh, when aojiru is very, very bad? <coughs> Okay, so uh, yeah, now uh, we have the noodles uh, being served, and you should get uh, the noodles in soon. Uh, we have two types of noodles that you can try today. You really should, everybody walking around, even uh, we have enough noodles for like about 70 people, so more than people sitting uh, on the table. Uh, you, if you want to just come around and then try the noodle, you might be able to order that soon. And we might be able to customize uh, to the way that you want the noodle to be. <clears throat> so I want you guys to enjoy those different, two different noodles in, with two different uh, soup. We have the regular, so the brown one is the regular homemade dashi. And then the one in a different color, the, that's the sesame. Uh, sesame dashi that they make. Try two different noodles in two different soups, uh, dipping sauce. So all the noodles made fresh this morning. Uh, and on the side of noodle, you also have wasabi and ginger. Uh, maybe you can put those in the regular dashi, the brown colored one, if you like spicy. The dashi for the cold one, the, the one you have, the classic one is very dark, has to be dark. I mean, if it's white, maybe you cannot uh, win the, uh, against the noodle. So it went the, the, for the warm, uh, hot, regular noodle udon, we have the kansai, like a white colored one. But for this, you have a darker colored uh, dipping sauce. So Hanon's from Kamakura, uh, Kanto, but the dashi that they make for the hot udon is more like a Kansai style. It's golden color with the white soy sauce, not the dark soy sauce. And it's branded with a lot of different ingredients. Uh, not just bonito and kelp, we have mackerel that's added a little bit in, into the dashi. It's very complicated. Again, uh, I, tried it to, I tried to make it with the same recipe uh, that the chef told me, but I couldn't make it good. And udon actually, I think, has a lot of possibilities. Udon actually can be served uh, all season. You have that seiro udon right now. It's in a cold dipping sauce, and we have summer special style that's in a cold soup. So I really want people to know that there are many other different styles than the regular hot udon, so you can go to Hanon all seasons. <clears throat> And actually, Seiro uh, is more popular than the regular classic hot noodle at, at Hanan. Uh, the signature menu for the first timers, we, uh, we always recommend this Seiro tasting, uh, in which you can try two different noodles with three different uh, dipping sauce. You have two different dipping sauce. We also have another one with the yam, mountain yam potato that's more fluffy, and it's, it's really good, too. <coughs> And udon can be served in a variety of shapes. <clears throat> okay, also udon, we, uh, like I said, Hanong is not just a udon restaurant, but we're trying to be udon bistro. So we offer a lot of other known udon dishes. 
Uh, we want people to try those small uh, dishes and share with your friends before going into your udon. That's what we are trying to be. We're not trying to be just a udon restaurant. Uh, we need to achieve that high uh, average spending per person. <coughs> And then, of course, you, have, you should drink, drink, drink uh, with the uh, appetizers and noodle. Uh, though we are still waiting on the liquor license, it should be coming, I hope, soon. <coughs> and we have this word, uh, this word called shime. Uh, shime basically means like a finishing dish. So udon uh, is considered to be a shime dish at Hanan. It's not your only dish to order. So our vision, uh, we are trying to whole start wholesaling the noodles. And we might uh, also take the custom order. Uh, if you guys want to have this type of noodle, maybe we can talk about it. And you know, we'll be able to uh, start doing that too. Uh, so those. And I think if I want to make udon a classic, I should also think about other restaurants too. I don't want to just be the only one, uh, but we don't, we don't want to be the only one, so, but we want to actually help uh, even supermarkets so that uh, people at home, they can eat, their, uh, they can eat the actual like, really flesh udon. Uh, so we are kind of developing this udon noodle, a uh, dried version in a package. So you can, uh, we hope to so sell those to like a supermarket. So. Uh, soon, it, I think we hope to be. Uh, we hope to that you you would see those noodles in the supermarket too, so you can enjoy at your home. <clears throat> and it's uh, when I introduce something new to the market, it's very important for us to educate the customers. That's what I've been doing all the time when I'm at the restaurant. I talk a lot, maybe too much, about what I'm serving, but that's very important. And that's what I've been doing. And then the first year that I opened Izakaya restaurant, New York Times talked about me uh, talking about talking too much about each dishes, but it was very fun. Well, the, you know, the food is very important, but then other than that, I think service is the most important thing. Uh, and also, it's the best PR that you could do with no money extra. Okay, so I say udon can be served in a different shape. Udon can be served like this. We serve this uh, only at Kamakura location right now. But udon can be sashimi. So it can be enjoyed with the soy sauce and wasabi. Uh, it, you know, so you don't, it's not in the soup. So there is a lot of possibilities for udon. Udon can be served like this. And the chips, uh, we deep fry the udon noodles. It's really good. Uh, well, maybe this could be the healthiest chips as well because the green one has like a sasa and omugi wakaba leaf. Uh, we're trying to package this maybe in a nice uh, branded package. So we're trying to sell this to like a supermarket or something so people can see the udon in a different shape. And uh, karinto is also another type of snack. Uh, it's uh, like a pretzel, but like after we deep fry, uh, we just uh, uh, sugar and honey. And this is like a nice tea snack that we really like in Japan. So yeah, the title of this presentation was Making Udon a Classic. Uh, this is like a summary of my presentation today. Uh, we are introducing udon uh, in many ways. So I want to show people udon can be served in different ways, different shapes, and udon has a lot of possibilities. Can be enjoyed all season, not only summer, I don't say, not only the, uh, the cold season. Uh, come try our cold uh, cereal udon and hanon. It's very good. It's actually our signature dish. So, you know, don't think udon is like the warm or hot dish. <laughs> and then we're going to be expanding our business to wholesale. So 
we're kind of trying to level up and uh, with own uh, businesses in New York, we're going to try to help other businesses as well. And we need to make the udon as healthy as possible, which healthy is the big uh, thing in this country, in New York especially. And at the end, most importantly, like I've been saying many, many times, uh, I do only what I like. I don't serve at what I don't like. I think people who work at the restaurant should be the biggest fan of the restaurant. Uh, the, the air, the atmosphere created by those people cannot be beaten by any other things. That's the best PR that I've been doing. I've never hired a PR. And I'm really confident about making anything popular if I like it a lot. Especially when I introduce something new. People do not know about that thing. So I, I don't like when people come to me. I've been producing. A lot of people come to me from Japan. Yudai, do you think people here is going to like this kind of thing, or should I change the taste? Should I localize the taste? Uh, I say, no, uh, I don't want to do it. I don't want to help you if you are trying to do something that you think is the real thing. Uh, that's not my style. So my style is to, to introduce the honest and real thing uh, without changing any details. So that's my style of business, and I, if I like anything, I can make that popular. I'm confident about that. So that's what I do. And yeah, thank you so much for listening today. Yeah, my name is Yudai Kanemaru. <laughs>